In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a conditional form using a free WordPress plugin that will allow you to have certain parts of your form appear and disappear depending on the user input. And we're getting started right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for your business, for your clients, and for yourself. And if it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you are notified when we publish more awesome material. And with that out of the way, let's head over to the screen capture and start building this conditional form. I'll see you there. So here we are in the WordPress dashboard. I'm going to hover over plugins and then add new. I'm going to search for Caldera forms. The one we want is this first one on the top left here. All the others are other add-ons for the forms that you can investigate if you like this plugin. But the main plugin is this first one here. I'm going to click on install now and then activate. Now the form is active. You can choose to sign up for their update list here if you want to, totally up to you. And Caldera Forms adds a menu option on the left-hand side over here. We're gonna click on Forms. Caldera Forms has a free version and a premium version. The free version does everything you probably want it to do. The premium adds some extra bells and whistles that most people won't even need. So I find the free version is awesome. So we're just gonna use the free one to do this, but just so you know, there's an option to get a premium one for more stuff if you want to. I'm gonna click on the new form button right up here. And we're just gonna start off with a blank form. If you, if you know what kind of form you want, starting from a template is a good idea because all the data is already in there. So it'll make your job a little bit faster, a little bit easier. But I'm just gonna start from a blank form so you can see how all the functionality works. I'm gonna call this form uh, service booking form. Then we're gonna click on create new. Our blank form is created. All we have is this blank row right here. To add a field, all we do is drag and drop this button onto that row, and it pops up with all the options we have for things to add. And there are a lot of options. We have, under the basic menu, we have all of these options. Under the select menu, all of these. The file menu, the content, the e-commerce, and the special. There's a lot of different options. Chances are, it's going to cover all the bases for what your business needs in regards to a form on a website. So I encourage you to look through all these options. I'm just going to use some basic ones just to show you how the form works and you can go and explore further. If you run into any problems, just ask questions in the comments below. If I can help you, I will. And, the and for this example, we're just going to use the single line text first. I'm going to click on set field and it adds that field here. On the right hand side, we have some data to fill out. We have to fill in a name for it. I'm just going to call this first name because that's what I want people to enter there and I'm going to make it required and that's that's the basics of what you have to do for each field I'm going to add another one I'm going to call it last name make it required then I'm going to add another one I'm going to make an email address let's call it email and make it required. And then I'm going to add a phone number, the basic phone number. Make that required as well. Now these are the basics for what I want the people to enter. And I'm going to have two different services that I offer. And I'm going to have them select which one they want through a drop down menu. So I'm going to click on add field and drag it down here again. In fact, I'm just going to make a new row. I'm going to click on this plus button to make a new row. Click on add field, put it down there. And I'm going to have a select menu, which is going to be a drop down select. And the name is going to be services. Make it required. Down at the bottom, we add the options by clicking the add option button. And the first one is going to be phone consult. And the second one is going to be in-house visit. So now we have two options set for our dropdown. Now I also want to add down below an address. Uh, see if they have an address field. They don't. So I'm just going to use the single line text again. Just going to call it address. Make it required. And the reason I'm adding address is because if I'm doing an in-house visit, I want them to be able to tell me what the address is because I want to be able to go there. But if they're choosing the phone consult, I don't need their address. So I'm going to make the form take that option out, take the address field out if they choose phone consult. And we do that by going over to conditions, clicking add conditional group, 
I'm gonna call this uh, remove address for phone consult. Let's be very descriptive so I know what I'm doing here. Type is gonna be hide. Add conditional line, click on that. And I'm gonna say if the services drop down is phone consult, we're going to apply this action, this hide action, to whatever is selected on the right hand side, in this case the address. So now our conditional group is done, we go back to our layout over here, and if we look on the right hand side, we see we have a condition automatically applied to that field right now, which is the remove address for phone consult field. So that's already done. So we're going to save the form, because it's always good to save your progress, and then we're going to preview it to see how that hiding option works. So when we preview the form, we have the address field here. If we choose in-house visit, the address field stays. If we choose phone consult, the address option disappears. It takes a minute, that one, that one took a few seconds right there, but it then disappears. We choose in-house visit, comes back, choose phone consult, disappears again, and that's how we can have things appear and disappear. Something that's conspicuously missing from our form is a submit button, which we have to add manually. So if we go back to our form builder, I'm going to add a new row by clicking the plus icon down here. I'm going to drag and drop a new field on there. And I'm going to choose the one called button. Click on set field beside that. Now it has the button right here. In the button field type, we can choose the type of um, input it is, but it's also auto selected as button. I'm just going to call it submit. And out of the submit text here, if you wanted to have this be something else, so um, send your request. Well, you could have the text be for the button. You just have to make sure the type stays as submit down here. If we click on save, and then we reload our preview form over here, we now have that button, which is send your request. Same as submit, same functionality, just different words on there. So now we've created the basic functionality that we wanted on this form. I'm just going to show you how to do a couple other cool things with this plugin because it's a pretty neat, easy to use plugin. So at this top area up here, if we want to split this into two different columns, we just hit this little button right here. Then we drag and drop pieces where we want them. So let's put first name on the left, last name on the right, and then email on the left, phone number on the right. Save it. And if we refresh this page over here, we now see the change in our layout. And that was pretty simple to do. Now you can even do something crazier split this one again, put our services and our address in here. I'm not saying you should do this, it's not very functional, but I'm just giving you an example of what you can do with this form and creating columns. And it's a very flexible form builder, it's really easy to use. I'm just gonna put these back down where they were because it looks better that way. And to remove a column, all we do is click this minus in the separator. And then that combines back to two columns. Just click on save to save that. What you also have the option of doing is adding more pages. So this is a form that's on one page right now as we see here, just one page. If we click on add page, we now have these tabs up here, page one, page two. So if on page two, I'm just gonna add a field just to make this functional. Just gonna call it, this is page two. Not something you wanna call it on your form, but I'm just using this as an example. It's gonna save that form and refresh this preview form. And now we still have a send your request option down here and we don't see page two. So what we have to do is change something really quick. Go back to page one, click the pencil beside the send your request button, change the type from submit to next page. I'm gonna change this to next page. And then on the, uh, on the second page, I'm gonna add another submit button, which is gonna be the actual submit button. Add a button, submit, save that form, refresh the preview. Now we have to enter the required, required fields before we can go. Click on next page and it takes us to the next page. Now we have a two page form and that's how easy that is. And you can add as many pages as you want. I think, I don't know what the upper limit is, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's no upper limit before your customers are gonna get tired of pages. So if you have more than 10 pages on your form, nobody's gonna fill it out. So you wanna make sure your, your pages aren't that many in number. 
and there's gonna be more than enough pages allowed in this plugin. Then we can hit submit to send the email, but before we do that, we can customize the email. So if we go to the email tab up here, we have the option at the very beginning to disable the mailer so we don't even send any email, which is up to you if you wanna do it that way, because the, all the entries are also input into the database, so you can view them on the site itself. And the email is actually ready to go as is. So it's auto-filled with this summary short tag, which automatically pulls in all the information from the form into the email. And you can also use specific tags. So this percent field tag percent or, or field slug percent. If we put that in here, we just need to put the actual field slug in there, which if we go to our layout, every one of these form items, click on the pencil, we have a slug in every one of them. And we just take that slug and we put it in between the percents. So that's going to input the phone number right there that was entered into the field. If you're not too worried about that, you can have it just as the summary, which just fills in all the content from the form. It puts it in order. It's not anything pretty, but it works. It doesn't, and it doesn't require any extra effort on your part, which is pretty cool. Then we have the processors tab, which is pretty neat. If we click on add processor, we can add an autoresponder. So this is sent out for, or to the people who submit the form. So when they submit the form, you'd get the email with their information that's sent to you. And then they would get an email if you had this autoresponder set up. You can also redirect them after they successfully submit the form. You can change the recipients depending on what is in the form. So for example, if, if this form data is in your business and it's sent right to the person who's doing the work and say they choose from the drop down window cleaning and you want that information to be sent to the person doing the window cleaning in your business. So you can have conditional recipients based on what they choose in the form, which is a great time savings if your business is set up that way. And you can increment value per entry. Uh, I can't think of a lot of use cases for that right now, but all that does is when they submit the form, it starts with the value of one. And then every time a form is submitted, the incremental value goes up. I don't know why you'd want that, but it's an option in there. And then there's variables, which are a little advanced and I can't think of very much you want to do with variables at this point. Responsive, you can choose which size of, of screen the, uh, the form starts to collapse and become responsive. So you can test this on various screen sizes. So I, what I would do is pull out your phone and test it and then see which one works best on your phone. And once that is all set, what you have to do to get this onto an actual page is click on the form settings tab up here, copy the short code, create a new page, and I'm going to call it booking form. I'm going to paste the short code right in here and hit publish. And now if we view this form, it looks much like the preview and we can go ahead and fill it out. I'm just going to do this really quickly. Click on submit and it says the form has been successfully submitted. Thank you. I'm going to hop into my email address or email account so you can see what that looks like. And this is what the email looks like. This is just using that summary tag where it auto fills all the information. And to me, this looks just fine. But if you want to change this to whatever you like, remember you do that inside of the, the email tab or click on the email tab and then you can customize it in here. And that's the end of the video. But before I finish off, there's a couple important things you have to consider. If the email is not coming through, make sure that your from email is set properly. Ideally, it's your email address or a company email address. The reply to email is the one that you reply to. So it's, it's basically who's it coming from. So when you get the email in your inbox, if you click on reply to, it's going to reply to this email address. And I usually set that to the actual email field in the form because that is the person who's submitting the form. That's their email address. And the very last one, email recipients. Make sure you have a business email address where you're actually going to receive these emails. And you can also have a blind carbon copy if you want to, but make sure you have at least one email here. And that's how easy it is to create a conditional form using a free WordPress plugin. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you notify and publish more awesome tutorials. And up in the top right hand corner of this video, a card just popped up 
Click on that because there's some awesome free WordPress resources for you. And until next time, keep crushing it with WordPress and I will see you in the next video.